Hey everybody, welcome back to the Comic Wall. It's me, the Outcast Angel, and today let's talk about issue 7 of Evolution by Image and Skybound. Now, I know what you're all are thinking. Andy, Evolution came out like two weeks ago. What are you doing with... Wh why is your video so late? I'll tell you. Now, I made my video uh, two weeks ago when Evolution came out, but for some reason my editing software just wasn't having it with that video. It did, it did fine with everything else, but just with that video, it was like, no. And so I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know what was going on and my video just wasn't coming out right. So I thought my only option was to redo it. So here we are. And so, um, I just, I didn't want to skip out on it. I didn't want to skip out on a video, especially for you guys, because, uh, you know, if I do it once, I'm going to keep doing it. And I don't, I don't want to be that girl. And so, uh, and also it's just, this is one of my favorite series. This is one of my favorite series to cover and to, you know, just read in general. And so I really wanted to uh, give my analysis on it and to, you know, review it with you guys. So here we are. And so uh, jumping in, we get to finally see what happened after last issue's shocking and just... Uh, just traumatizing um, ending involving Abraham, and uh, I, I'm still I'm still very bothered by it. It I I did not see it coming for like a mile away, and it just uh, it, that that's what bothers me the most is that I I didn't see anything like that coming, and so uh, yeah, we finally get to see what happens in this issue after that issue, <laughs> and so. Uh, jumping in, we touched base uh, with Hannah and Juan. If we, uh, if you guys remember last issue, uh, they made it to Quedlinburg, Germany, to try and figure out uh, what's going on with Hannah, especially because she has the same infection that everyone else uh, has, that everyone else is evolving uh, with. And so, um, when they get to Quedlinburg, they find this set up and I'm not sure if it's from the German government or who exactly is doing this but Juan describes it as a triage in which they think that uh, they're trying to help these people these evolved and so Hannah is hopeful she really wants to like we see here she really wants to go uh, and get help if she can and she uh, feels it in her gut that you know she can she that they can help her but Juan isn't as uh, trusting. He's not. He thinks it's too good to be true, especially with the fact that at the bottom of this picture, we can see uh, just a pile of bodies of the evolved that are just riddled with bullets. And so uh, he's not trusting this too much. So he kind of like uh, tries to keep, holds her back, trying to keep her from making any noise. But when he does that, uh, something weird happens. This tentacle or this antenna comes out of Hannah's ear. And she notices it. I'm not sure if Juan notices it. But in some weird way, I think she's communicating with the other evolved in the triage. Because uh, the other the other evolved that are in their hospital beds and everything getting treated, they, uh, they start getting the same antenna coming out of their ears. And they rise up and they're saying like, no, like reaching out to uh, Hannah. And... So obviously this sets off the, the soldiers there. And so uh, we see two soldiers that are going into the forest trying to figure out, trying to find um, whatever's uh, putting the evolved into a frenzy. And so uh, Juan ends up getting found. And, uh, and while the soldier's focusing on him, Hannah actually jumps into action and tackles down the soldier in the process, getting shot. And so... Uh, Hannah's obviously hurt. She's, um, we're not sure how hurt she is, but Juan's assuming the worst. And so the soldier didn't mean to shoot her. She, he was attacked and he, uh, he either reacted or it just happened, you know? And so, uh, Juan starts beating down on this, on this kid, really. And, um, and, uh, the soldier's, uh, partner comes in to try and help, but Juan is holding a gun to, holding his gun to, uh, this soldier and is saying, uh, listen to me, you're going to help her or I'll kill you. And uh, Hannah actually stops him. Turns out she's fine. 
she's not hurting and the bleeding has stopped and she actually raises her hands and we see these holes in her hands obviously from where she got shot and she's saying it's a miracle now interesting interestingly enough this reminds me of uh this this reminds me of a biblical reference in in uh in some sense because uh just considering the fact that hannah was acting as a nun for the better part of a year maybe more i'm not sure exactly but um you know it's interesting because it reminds me of when uh you know like jesus rose from the dead and um when he met up with his disciples he uh showed them his hands and showed the holes in his hands from where he had been nailed to the cross and so i just think this is interesting it's a clever clever part on the writer's uh part and i i enjoyed it and so uh leaving hannah and juan we jump to abraham who is uh somewhere outside philadelphia and he's hiding out at this uh you know rinky dink motel and here we see him trying to contact his wife which is interesting to, which is interesting uh, to me because um in one of the last issues one of the last two issues uh i think we found out that either his son or i think his son was sick and uh this may have uh indicated that he was evolving as well and i'm not sure if his wife was too so it just seems uh, curious as to why he would be trying to call her and so um, in this motel Abraham's still continuing his studies especially after the fact that he murdered Dr. Sesia this murder psychopath just gunned her down and um, what he did was he harvested he harvested her organs <laughs> I, I hate it I hate it. it 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 still bothers me and turns out she was a clean test subject a perfect te test subject for his studies in the fact that he um can study uh her body versus an infected an infected body and so what he's saying is that i can speed it up but i can't slow it down and i can't stop it not yet and so uh he, he's kind of backed into a corner because with the resources and the equipment he has uh he he's not exactly making a lot of uh you know uh he's not getting the the data that he needs he's not getting uh the the results that he needs and so uh he steps out for a while to clear to clear his head and in his little monologue here we see he's saying it's funny all this would still be here uh if we were gone if we evolved into mindless monsters it might even undo some of the damage that we've done but then when he returns to his motel room, uh, his uh, his monologue changes, saying, "Circumstances change intent. The appalling is sometimes allowed." And here we see he has another victim that I'm sure he plans to harvest more organs from, and it's it's intense. I mean, obviously he's desperate. He's uh, very desperate, and he's trying to. Uh, either figure out what's going on, trying to prove that he's not crazy, which he's not doing a very good job of, and or you know trying to stop uh, this what he thinks is a cataclysmic event happening in humanity. But it's 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 going too far. I'm, 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 God knows how how far he's going to go from here. And so now we jump to uh, Rochelle and Claire. And if you remember last issue, Rochelle actually. Uh, caught up with uh, Claire, scaring her, thinking that uh, she was breaking up with her. But turns out Claire, I mean, Rochelle is evolving as well. And she knows that um, she knows that Claire has been meeting up with uh, Mr. Hurwitz. Mr. Hurwitz? Yeah. Uh, she's been meeting up with Mr. Hurwitz and, um, and she knows that Mr. Hurwitz know, possibly knows what's going on uh with rochelle well in in other words rochelle knows that doc that mr herwitz sorry i'm sorry mr herwitz knows what's going on with her so um uh first off first off claire's a little worried she's completely terrified that uh rochelle's gonna break up with her and she just feels so bad that she went behind her back to meet with mr herwitz in order to kind of earn the money that she 
got to pay for her um to pay for claire's uh parents hospital bills and so um rochelle calms her down saying like uh don't we'll talk about this we'll talk about your secret uh rendezvous with uh her which later uh but let's focus i need your help set up a meeting with mr herwitz and we can get some answers for what's going on with me and so claire's on the ball she's like okay okay but just please don't leave you know and rochelle's assuring her i'm not gonna leave i just need help you know and so uh and so claire's in of course she doesn't want to lose rochelle and Honestly, I I was terrified. I didn't. I really don't want these uh, girls to break up because they're they're just the cutest. And um, and uh, I I really want to see where their story goes from here. And so you know, uh, breaking up would just break my heart. So I I really I'm glad that they're sticking together in uh through this. And now we we jump back to uh to Abraham. I'm gonna call him Abraham because uh. Uh, within the last vi uh, videos, I've been um, messing up uh, Mr. Hurwitz and Dr. Hurley because obviously the her, you know, like it's uh, I mess up I mess up the name, so I'm calling Dr. Hurley Abraham, and I'm just gonna call Mr. Hurwitz Mr. Hurwitz. So um, Abraham is meeting up with the landlord or the owner of the motels, and. He's paying out. He's paying off his rent for the next uh, the next few days, and so um, interesting thing here. The motel owner says, uh, "Sure, you don't want to move closer to the to the front. It'll save you all those walks to the ice machine." And he's like, "What do you need all that ice for anyway?" And Abraham dodges the question, saying, yeah, uh, "Keeps the beer cold." And this the motel's like the motel owner's like, "That ah, makes sense now," and so. We see him walking away from the motel with this trusty ice chest in hand and he's leaving the motel and he, here we actually see he's leaving to Atlanta. Uh jeez, he's going to Atlanta. He's already um he was uh, he was in Philadelphia um and to go to Atlanta that seems like a drive. And so at one point he stops and I'm not sure exactly what happens here, but he stops at a bridge and it looks like he threw a body over the bridge. Maybe uh, the body of of one of the evolved. Maybe the the guy that he kidnapped uh, in the beginning. Um, maybe he wasn't clean after all, and he got rid of him. And he also tosses all these papers over the edge that say "Call the police." So obviously he's he's uh, he's gone over the edge. He's um, he doesn't he's. I guess the line between what's right and wrong is blurred for him right now because he's trying to figure out what's going on in humanity. And so when he gets to Atlanta, he actually parks in front of his old house. And here we see uh, his, I think his wife and his son playing out in the yard. And it's, he's, you know, he's checking up on them and, uh, but he can't exactly go back. And so now we see him uh, in the, hiding out in the back of a, of a car and I'm, I'm sure it's not his because uh someone gets into the car and abraham jumps into action he uh and he puts a needle into this guy's neck and turns out this guy's name is frank and he is actually an employee with the cdc and so that's actually where um abraham worked i think or where he was going to work but he um uh, once he found out about this evolution going on he went he became obsessed and he ended up losing his jo his job and his uh you know his promise to that and so uh frank and abraham know each other because uh frank is able to uh recognize abraham's voice and so uh frank uh, i mean abraham is saying um you know i haven't frank is saying i haven't seen you in three years man what do you want and he, Abraham says, don't worry, I won't hurt you, I just need a ride. And obviously, he must be going to the CDC because um, because we see that, that badge. And so, what's he going to do? The, the, he, we've seen what he's capable of. Where is this going to go from there? Now we jump back to uh, Hannah and Juan, and they are 
they're being held by these uh, soldiers from the the triage in Quedlinburg, and so um, their captain ends up coming in to uh, to talk to uh, obviously question these uh, to question Hannah and Juan, and so um, turns out that they know who Hannah is because they ran their passports and found her real name as he says and he addresses her as Hannah Paulson and what what else he says is that of course we didn't know who you were at the time of the miracle the ha her hands uh, but as you might imagine every piece of that event was of great interest and no 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 and not, not her hands turns out uh, they're talking about the moment where uh, she saw her friend die and um, the captain um, lifts up his sleeve and explains and we see a little tattoo here and he says Pre progresses um, we don't know where you've been Hannah but I'm Captain Garth Ren Renekamp and it's my genuine honor to welcome you back into the fold was Hannah part of these soldiers at one point and could that event that she witnessed uh her friend dying could that have been uh something she orchestrated and could she have maybe lost her memory because she obviously doesn't know who these people are and she's been uh stuck at a nunnery in uh with the church for the longest time and you know when we first heard her story she said she was wandering around after that event for a good bit until the church found her and took her in so Maybe she lost her memory, and maybe she is one of these soldiers, but I, I, I'm excited for the next issue to find out. And so uh, we're done with, the, with their story for now. Now we jump to Hannah and Claire, who are driving to uh, Mr. Hurwitz's uh, estate, and they're, they're set on getting, uh, on getting answers. And Claire's just so cute. She's, she's so worried about... Uh, about Rochelle hating her, but Rochelle's fine. She's she obviously still loves her, and but at the same time, I think maybe she might. This might be some kind of ploy. Maybe she's saying like you know keeping Claire calm in order to meet up with Mister Hurtwitz to you know get answers, and then she's done. But I don't know. Like for sure, she knows that uh, Claire couldn't. Claire couldn't. Um, uh, you know, she couldn't pass this up. She had to, especially given the fact that uh, all her uh, parents' hospital bills were paid after the fact that they died. And so uh, the issue ends with uh, Rochelle saying, uh, as bad as things are now, they're about to get a whole lot worse. And we see them pulling up to uh, Mr. Hurwitz's estate, and Mr. Hurwitz is actually looking out the window toward them. And so he's obviously not very happy about this, especially, uh, I guess, with Claire betraying his trust and so that's the end of this issue and I was actually lucky enough to get a letter printed in this issue and so I start with hello team evolution first off why Abraham Ugh. I honestly had no idea he would go to that length to this length but to kill Sessia um, I don't think he he I didn't think he was that crazy uh, of course he isn't of course he isn't crazy but he's not going about this the right way he's way too desperate um, I got scared for Claire and Rochelle a bit there. I really don't want them to break up. Stuff like that hurts my heart too much. Uh, but now she's infected, and there's a motorcycle going out, going on outside of my house. Um, and Hannah is suddenly cured? Obviously not. Um, I can't wait for y'all to show us what's going on, so I'll see you next issue, which was two months later. And so, um, John Moisen, Moisen the uh, editor for Evolution, uh, chimes in saying hey Andy thanks for your letter it sounds like you're starting to see where we're going uh, with some of these uh, stories and you should probably probably keep an eye on Claire and Rochelle the story goes to places I never would have expected I also hope as things go on we have all these uh, character crossover and well all these characters cross over and interact with each other uh, I mean that has to happen at some point right and so uh, Christopher Sabella, one of the writers for this series, uh, responds with, 
Andy, you're definitely right that Abe isn't going about this the right way. Although, stay tuned because where we where he goes from here, he might actually be onto something. Um, when the world is ending right in front of your eyes, is there a right way to do things? And I love the Claire and Rochelle storyline, and I wish I could tell you everything there is going to be okay and happy endings, but you've read this far, so I doubt you're going to uh, fall for that one. I'm scared. I'm terrified. I don't want them to break up. I love them, please. Uh, but that's the end of that uh, letter, and that's the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys liked it, and if you did, drop a like, show the love, hit that subscribe button to get more of my videos, ring the bell to get notifications of when I post new videos, so that way you guys stay updated and don't miss out, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!